of more people joining in. So we are looking at um, geometrical optics session 5 today. And we've already had, uh, I mean, we have a test scheduled tomorrow, so we'll be also concentrating on a lot of revision questions. So, so far, uh, we've understood about this formula, refraction at a spherical surface. U B by B minus U A by U is equal to the difference of refractive indexes divided by the radius where this is happening from A to B, medium A to medium B. So we looked at this in detail, then we looked at lens makers formula. That was 1 upon F is refractive index of glass divided uh, with respect to whichever medium. So typically it is air. But if the medium of air is replaced with something else, you can equivalently change this term to refractive index of glass with respect to that medium. And, so and then finally, the lens formula. One by v minus one by u is equal to one upon two. Then all of these formulae, of course, are applied with the Cartesian sign convention and all that. So let's start with uh, an example with the application of this. So we have this equation now in today's first problem. We have a concave or convex lens. Of glass of refractive index 1.5 as usual. And the radii of curvature is 60 centimeters and 45 centimeters. So the first thing we have to do here is find the focal length. Secondly, find the image position. for a point object on its principal axis. At a distance of 75 centimeters from the pole. Okay, so just uh, start by working out this question. Okay, Ganesh, that's correct. Yes, so much that is correct. Is it a converging lens or a diverging lens? Yeah. 
is the focal position that you are telling the answer is it a real focal point or is it a virtual focal point uh, yeah then is that's why you have to be careful with the sign convention Is actually going to act like a converging lens. Okay, students, if there is uh, anybody from, you know, batch two or group two present over here because of some. Oh, is that the case? I sent you the ID now. Sorry, I have sent batch two the ID by mistake in that case. Uh, So I have sent the integrated batch, the Neri batch, and RTPS one. Oh yeah, yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's up to you guys. I mean, you can attend now. Or you can attend at uh, three o'clock. There will there will be the second lecture also at three o'clock. I don't think that is clashing for you uh, for anything. Okay. Yeah, just wait. I'll get back, back to you guys. So, Siddharth, unless something is clashing for you people at three o'clock, uh, there will be the normal lecture at three o'clock. I'm just confirming with Janeshwar sir whether anything is clashing for batch two. Okay, so in case anybody from batch two is over here right now, just hang on for a second. I'll just confirm. Your lecture is scheduled at three o'clock, but since he is sent. Yeah, so now I I will just uh, confirm the answers. Yes. Okay. So first thing you have to understand is that this lens will act like a converging lens. Okay. So let's understand that first part, the focal length. So the interesting thing is whether I keep the lens this way or I keep it flipped, it doesn't matter. If I consider light coming from this side. Consider this kind of situation. Then my first surface, you can see here. If I extend the first surface, it's, let's say like this. Now if I extend the second surface, it's like this. So the first center, center of curvature is here. The second center of curvature is here okay, compared to the pole. So P C one is your larger radius, it is sixty centimeters, and P C two is your smaller radius, so it is forty five centimeters. In this case, if I keep the lens this way, and light is falling from the left hand side, so we should substitute R one because this will be the first surface. So this will be the second surface. This is more. This thing uh, it is more curved. Okay, so that means it is having a less radius, lesser radius compared to that. So anyway, so that's why my R1 will be minus 60 with sign convention, and R2 will be minus 45. So 1 upon f would be equal to 1.5 minus 1. 
into one upon R one minus one upon R two. So as you can see, this is giving me a positive focal length. That means the focal position is on the other side. the focal position that i'm getting is with a positive sign so it is a converging lens of focal length 360 centimeters that's a conclusion okay now so basically these rays after refraction when we let's say some rays something like this okay now this should be enough because we already know the property of lens that when you flip the lens the focal length or the nature of the lens does not change but just to you know clarify that point let me also quickly work out for you what happens if i assume the lens is oriented the other way if i assume the lens is oriented this way or even that light is coming from the other side i can keep the orientation of the lens the same but light is coming from the other side whichever the two So now, when incident light is coming from this side, this time you can see that this surface, if it is something like this, this is where your first center of curvature is located, and the second surface, if it is like this. Second surface is center of curvature, is somewhere over here. So this time it is hitting the tighter surface, having the smaller radius first. Okay, but the radii of curvature are, are on the other side. So light coming from this side. Now this is surface one, and this is surface two. so this time what will happen with my cartesian sign convention r1 will be positive of 45 and r2 will be positive of 60 and therefore 1 by f will be 1.5 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 it will give you the same That the focal length is positive of 360, which again means the same thing. It is a real focal point. But just because the focal point is real, that doesn't mean every object has to give you a real image. Okay, that's a different matter altogether. But if the rays are parallel to the principal axis, like I've drawn in this diagram first, then this works. Okay. Same conclusion. The same. All right. So that you know dispels any doubts that you know if I flip the lens in the case of convex or concave or something. Yes, yes. Uh, Ashwin, don't worry. Uh, batch two, along with uh, the non-integrated batch, we will have your lecture at three o'clock as usual. I think Yanish Prasad must have sent by mistake uh, because I have not received any reply from him also yet. But anyway, I will be there at three o'clock, and I don't think you are having any clash because college and all is closed today. Okay. So now, yes, uh, you have got the correct answers for the for the uh, this thing uh, for the position of the image. so it doesn't matter whether we keep the lens this way or that way either way we keep the lens you know the focal point for light on this side coming from this side 
the focal point is on the other side. So if we keep our point object over here at a distance of 75 centimeters from the pole, we know the focal point for it is on the other side and a distance of 360 centimeters. So 1 by B minus 1 by U will be equal to 1 by F. So as you can see, B will become a negative quantity. So our finally our V is becoming negative of 15 into 120 divided by 90. Yes, uh, Shreya, Ashwin, all of you can join at 3 o'clock as per your normal time given. I think it must have been some oversight on Ganeshwar's part or whatever, I mean, it doesn't matter. divided by 19 that according to me here is just check my calculation if it is correct Yes, uh, I will come to magnification better. We will discuss about magnification in detail. Something wrong with my calculation. Yes, this should be ninety four point seven. Now this also shows that it is a virtual image. So coming back to the ray diagram for a moment, we understand that so B 
these rays will tend to get slightly less convergent but they will still end up divergent okay, so that is why they are not converging to a real point beyond okay, so rather what is happening is when you produce them back they are giving you an image on the same side they are put as a virtual image so somebody from this side will be able to view the object as over here so for an observer on this side it will it will be a image which is very much visible like this at, at a depth from here of 94.75 but it will not be obtainable on a photographic plane because it's not the real point of convergence of light rays so you cannot obtain it on a screen or on a you know uh, photographic plane that kind of image so this is an an example of the application of um, both the lens makers formula and the uv formula and with this application you will understand that irrespective of what the radii of curvature are and irrespective of which side light is falling from a convex or concave lens will always have that nature that it is converging in nature it converges light it has a real focal point so its behavior is similar to a convex lens Okay, so next up, what we are going to do is uh, the analysis of the convergent and divergent two types of lenses in detail. first of all if we look at converging lenses real focal point so by convex plano convex and concave convex these all come in this category okay, so ray tracing so for the reference i will take a by convex lens but you can replace it with a plano convex focal point on this side for light coming from the other side and sometimes this point also becomes significant for us so twice of the focal point so now the different type of rays that we can consider while making ray diagrams this is very similar to mirrors actually only that there it was reflection here it is refraction so a ray passing parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focal point then the inverse of this if we consider a ray which is supposedly aimed at the focal point then such a ray after refraction becomes parallel to the principal axis
then a very simple type of ray a ray aimed at the pole literally goes undeviated now the reason for this is very simple the reason for this is something like this i'll come back to the diagram but if we just consider a slab of glass what happens to an incident ray over here it refracts and then again emerges out so that it emerges out parallel to the first one If you have an incident ray like this, it emerges out like this. So, this lateral deviation, which you can call as a delta, that delta is proportional to the thickness of this thickness. Say D. So for a thin lens at the pole, the thickness is negligible and the curvature is nearly parallel. That is what happens for a thin lens. You consider it at the pole. Just cut this. This is like a slab like this of negligible thickness and these two sides are almost parallel. So if these two sides are almost, I mean the thickness between them is negligible, then this delta tends to zero. So that is why the ray passing through the, uh, the, the pole goes undeviated. So these are three primary type of rays that we consider. And just make a note of this point here. So now based on this, we can see that if we consider extended object, and magnification. Now let's consider we have an object which is over here, extended object AB and this side, this point here happens to be the focal point, this is the pole. So let's understand the image of the point A by using two of the rays that we have talked about. One is the ray incident parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it passes through the focal point. The other, let's consider a ray which is passing through the pole. So it goes undeviated. Very simple type of ray. And remember all this analysis that we are doing is valid for the paraxial rays. So we are considering this height 
very small compared to the radius of curvature. It doesn't look like that in the diagram. But so the image of E you can see is at that real point over here. So it is what we call a real inverted a vertically inverted image e prime b prime. Now the idea of magnification will be the same. This angle will be equal to this angle because this ray is undeviated. If this angle is some theta. Then the angle subtended by the object at the pole will be the same as the angle subtended by the image at the pole. So therefore again you can see that triangle EVP is exactly the same as mirrors are similar. So EB upon EP should become E prime B prime upon E prime P. That means the size of the image divided by the size of the object will become the distance of the image divided by the distance of the object. So that is mod of B by mod of E. So the magnification's magnitude becomes mod of B by E. And you can see here that V is positive with sign convention, U is negative and it is inverted. So, inverted means magnification should also be negative. So, the formula becomes V by E. And this is a universal formula I'll show it to you for later uh, diverging lengths also. But for the moment, this is the formula that we derived for converging lengths. So, we'll just take a moment to go through this and understand this. Now, we'll also see that converging lens is also capable of creating a uh, this thing, a virtual upright image. But in this case, the ray diagram we've considered, what is happening is it is creating a real inverted image. All right, so this should be pretty clear. Now let's look at the other case I was telling you. So it so turns out that We have an object, extended object, which is actually pretty close to the pole. That is, the distance of the object is less than the focal length of the lens. Then we get that situation of virtual image, which is upright. If our extended object, EB, is such that this distance EP, 
is less than the focal distance. Okay. The you know, equivalent focal point on this side, let's say that prime, so it's at the same distance. So here what will happen is this ray incident parallel to the principal axis. passes through so because I'm going to have to extend it back anyway Like this, okay. Now, if you consider the other area you're talking about, the one which is through the pole, you will see that that is divergent in comparison to this one. That is why the rays after refraction they do not meet. You see, this is divergent in comparison to this one. So this one also has to be produced back. Understand that this time the image will not be obtainable on a photographic plate, rather, it will be visible from the other side as a virtual upright and also magnified image. So you can see this is a virtual upright and in this case you can clearly see without doing any calculation also that it is magnified. In the previous case I did not specify whether it is magnified or diminished because it could be either way, depended on where exactly the object was placed. But here as long as it is placed at a distance of less than the focal length, we will do this analysis in detail but we will see. Now again the same analysis will apply over here that if you take triangle EVP and triangle E prime B prime P, you'll be able to show the same thing that the magnification will be equal to mod of B by E. And this time in terms of sign you can see that M should be positive because it is upright and U and B are both negative. So again the formula with sign convention, this becomes m is equal to b by b. We see that it works both for uh, real and virtual images, as at least as far as this thing is concerned. Converging lens or concave lens or you know, these type of lenses is concerned. Lenses which have a real focal point, they will always have this kind of a formula. We'll show in a moment that the virtual focal point lens will also be like that, but. Okay, people, so hope this analysis is clear. Just a moment, I have to try and refresh the screen.
okay people unfortunately it will take a couple of minutes while my screen is uh, refreshing it's restarting that program so in the meantime just uh, try out a question you can note down a question and try it out so a bi convex lens just write down the data of the question hopefully all of you are getting the audio properly nature yeah i think you are getting the audio yeah so a, a bi convex lens of focal focal length 6 meters okay. a bi convex lens of focal length 6 meters is producing is producing a real and diminished image so a bi convex lens of focal length 6 meters is producing a real and diminished image of half the size a real and diminished image of half the size of the object find the object distance with respect to the pole so bi convex lens of focal length 6 meters is producing a real and diminished image of half the size of the object so find the position of the object with respect to the lens just try this out people i will get the screen on in that much time Okay, Nina. I will check your answer. It seems to be correct. So, I check your calculation once. Cannot be at the focal position, Bombay. So you have to check your calculation. So be careful with the application of sign convention and the lens formula. You have to use the UV lens formula. so let me verify this for you so it says that uh, you have the bi convex lens yeah so this problem says you have the bi convex lens of focal length 
six meters. This is given in terms of bond and real diminished image. half size so you have this kind of situation you kept an object here and the image is somewhere here like this okay. so actually this diagram is wrong because if the object is half the size, then the image distance also has to be half the object distance. Okay, so, so let's say the object is at distance x on this side, and the image is on at distance y on the other side. So with sign convention, one by b minus one by u is equal to 1 by f focal position will be somewhere okay, so that's your equation 1 and the magnification factor which is b by u will be minus of y by x that should be minus half for the second or x should be equal to double of y very simple so to calculate x, that's it. That's all you have to do. So 3 by x is equal to 1 by 6. So x should be equal to 18 meters. The object distance should be 18 meters in front of you. So this, this type of question is nothing but systematic application of the two formulae. 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. And the magnification is v by u. But in both the formulae, you have to be careful about substituting the sign property. Okay. So that is very important in a question like this. Okay, so let us understanding. Let's let's understand next thing. Ray tracing for a diverging lens. So the typical examples are biconcave lens or plano concave lens. Remember, convexo concave does not act like a diverging lens. Lenses which are of Select this. An incident light parallel to the principal axis tends to diverge. So then, when you produce them back, it passes through the focal point. So, the ray tracing for this type of lens. Is uh, typically going to be like this. Just a moment. So I'm going to reshare the screen.
So again, we will consider three types of rings. Parallel to the principal axis, it will diverge such that it appears to come from the virtual focal point. And then reversibility applied to that particular ring. So for light coming from this side, this is the virtual focal point. So any ray parallel to the principal axis will after refraction diverge such that it appears to come from that particular point. This is my first type of ray. Now my second type of ray is that, see on the other side, we can draw a point which is at the same focal distance as this side. So this becomes like the second focus or the, you know, the image of the focal point on the other side, that kind of thing. So if we have a ray of light which is supposedly incident on that, like this. Then after refraction, that will actually be become parallel to the principal axis like this. This ray. So our a ray which is aimed at the focal point after refraction becomes parallel to the principal axis. And of course, we have that normal situation a ray which is passing through the pole goes undeviated. So these are three of the most common type of rays that we can consider. For ray tracing. Now let us see the magnification. And how that looks. Now, this is my virtual focal point. Now consider any extended object like this over here. So a ray of light which is incident from the tip of this B parallel to the principal axis. That will emerge out like this. And now we can just consider another ray of light which is passing through the pole. 
that one will go on degree you can see that this intersection point becomes the image only or you can even consider that interesting ray the third one get considered which is aimed at the image of the focal point on the other side that becomes parallel to the principal axis after refraction We have a ray like this. It's going to magnify this a bit. So this incident ray. After refraction, will emerge out parallel to the principal axis because it was aimed at the focal point. So this one produced back, this refracted ray produced back, this refracted ray produced back, and this refracted ray produced back. All three converge at that common point, which you can see will become the image. Here, we have the image E prime. Okay, so again, we have a diagram which is somewhat similar but not exactly the same as the virtual image for a converging lens because there it was a uh, magnified virtual image. Here it is a diminished. Okay, so this is a virtual. upright and diminished image so again triangle ebp if you do the same analysis you will get magnification of magnet uh, magnitude of magnification is mod b by e and again you can see your m is positive And U and V are negative. So you can see with sign convention, it is V by U. So this becomes the universal formula for magnification so for all lenses. Now you have the common formula: one by V minus one by U is equal to one by F, and magnification is equal to V by U. And of course, you have the lens figures formula that one by f is so. This applies to all thin lenses. Okay, so hope this is clear. This uh, you can make a quick note of this. Yeah, if light somehow passes through the left of the body, then also it is fine. Like, you know. so to answer a doubt I've got over here on WhatsApp, if we have a situation like this, that you know, okay, so this is one type of ray we are getting. Now we have another type of ray here, which is like this. Going like this, okay. 
then this will diverge out something like this such that this thing has to be produced back this will be the image b prime Be something like this, and of course, instead of cutting the principal axis at this point, if this ray were cutting the principal axis at the pole, it would go on deviating. So, at the pole, what is happening? Your refracted ray produced back is the same as the incident ray, okay. but for any other one, it is a different thing. Yeah, I'll be discussing some questions towards the end, Swamudip. So, at that point of time, I will discuss your doubt. So we'll be doing uh, the second hour of the lecture. We are coming to it very soon now. We will be discussing uh, questions only. Okay. So now let us come to the quick analysis of convex and concave lenses. So I'm going to go through this a uh, little fast because it is similar to what we have seen before for mirrors. So focal point and a point which is at a distance 2f and if we consider an image of the focal point on this side and an image of 2f prime on this side what we will see is that any extended object somewhere over here gives you a real image somewhere over here so object At mod u greater than 2f, it gives you real inverted and diminished image between f and 2f. You can take an example and see. Suppose we have convex lens of focal length, let us say 30 centimeters, and we keep an object at, let us say, 90 centimeters. So it fits this description. The object distance is more than twice the focal length. We can see that 1 by v minus 1 by u will be equal to 1 by f. So this is giving you a magnification factor of minus half. By you. So, this is the first type of data set we should look at. You can complete the ray diagram yourself. The ray diagram will also support this if you do this properly on graph paper. Alright, so hope this is clear. 
Now, second thing you see is this is a very interesting case. The second one. If we have an object which is placed exactly at the two f distance, then the image is exactly at two f on that side, and it's of the same size. This is CD. So this is also a very interesting second piece that the object is at this kind of distance, then we get a real inverted. Same size. Okay. That is magnification factor is minus one. Okay. At b equal to twice the okay. This also you can check out with a numerical example, but we get this only. And now, if you were to apply reversibility to the first one, that is, you make e prime b prime the object, you see b has to become the image. So that means if the object distance is between f and two f, then the image distance becomes greater than two f, and it becomes a it becomes a magnified diminished uh, sorry magnified inverted and real. Here, if we were to keep an object here. You see, the image will be somewhere. Here. This becomes that piece. While you're noting down, I'll just take you to the brief re diagram. This is a this kind of. Then of course you have 
a situation where if the object is at focal distance of the image is at infinite the rays emerge parallel after refraction And finally, the only case in which uh, we can get a virtual image for a convex lens is if the object is at a distance of less than focal length. For example, if we keep an object somewhere here, we will get an image somewhere like this. And what we will see is, if we bring the object now closer to the Pole. The image also comes closer to the pole. So, mod u is less than the focal length or object between f prime and pole. It always gives you a virtual upright and magnified. Now, if you apply reversibility to this, you will understand what happens in the case of virtual objects. So, we will come to that next, but make a note of this first.
now let us look at that very interesting situation of at what position the image will look in that i showed you it is a virtual upright magnified image okay. the position of the image is seen side as of this this ev's image is over here a prime b prime cd's image is over here c prime b prime now consider virtual objects So you see that we will end up just applying the reversibility principle to the above diagram. Okay. So if we have Let us say a virtual object like this. Because the rays incident on it are like this. This is one ray. It was aimed at the point B. You can see that after refraction, just move. Okay. So after refraction, this would have passed through the focal point. So let's say our focal point was somewhere here. So now after refraction, it's supposed to go to this point. Use the refracted ray back. And now let's consider a re incident through the pole. That goes undeviated. So you can see that B's image becomes that point. So this becomes A prime B prime for this virtual object EB. So any virtual object. from pole to infinity will always give you a virtual upright diminished image okay. now that image will be between pole and focal point so even if this object goes further here, the image will always remain between pole and focal point. That you can check with some values also. But you will understand that's from reversibility of this. Here see, if this was the object, then this became the image. Okay. So now if this is the object, 
this has to become the image. If A prime, B prime is the object, then the image has to be the image. Okay. So for that case, light is coming from this side. Okay. So that's why the diagram below is drawn like a mirror image of that. So for the case of virtual objects for converging lenses, remember there's only one case possible. All virtual objects. will give virtual image between pole and focal point and that will be upright and diminished only. Nothing else is possible. Okay, so this is a very important part of the analysis of convex lenses which is not there in standard textbooks and all but if you keep this part of your analysis then when you are doing questions where multiple you know, uh, events are happening in geometrical optics and one of the events involves a virtual object for some kind of lens or mirror or whatever, then that question is that much more easy to handle for you. Now likewise, we will do the quick analysis for the diverging lens. So for diverging lens, the real object thing is very simple actually. It gives you only one type of image. So, any real object, irrespective of where it is kept. I will only give you one type of image. And that is image somebody here. Let's understand how that image comes. This will be a common gray diagram for all sorts of objects, all sorts of real objects, irrespective of where they are. It will always tend to give you an image which is between pole and focal point. image for any object that is magnitude of u is from 0 to infinity in front of the pole. If this virtual diminished And upright between focal point. So this is the case for all real objects. Okay. Now virtual objects here is a little bit more complicated. So we will do that with some numerical examples. So at this stage I will start doing some problem solving and numerical examples. 
will help us understand this whole thing better. Okay, because so this should be clear. Now, for virtual objects, uh, for this thing for diverging lens, from the no, actually both type are possible. You will see, it's very interesting. For diverging lens, we can have virtual real, we can have virtual virtual also. So I'll I'll show you the examples. But for converging lens, it's the other way around. For converging lens, a virtual object will always give you a virtual image. So, so let's do this with an example. Find the position and nature of the image for the given ray diagram. So the given ray diagram now is like this. So, rays are incident such that they converge at a point like this where it is given to us that this distance is let us say 20 centimeters and this height is 3 millimeters and this is a diverging lens. of focal length thirty centimeters. Okay. So find the and also complete the ray diagram and complete the ray diagram. Just try this out. So this will give you one situation in which you will understand how the position of the uh, so Ganesh, what type of image is it real or virtual? That also you have to tell me. Okay. I think your answer is correct. Just state the type of image also and complete the ray diagram. Yes. Good.
okay people so hope all of you diagram dance please check your answers Mention that this side is negative and this side is positive. And understanding the focal position will be here, you know, the actual focal position. So we will take u as plus twenty centimeters. Like this, minus sixty centimeters. So one by v minus one by u. Is equal to one by f. So we will get one by v is equal to one by twenty minus one by six. Oh, sorry, thirty minus. What will length is supposed to be thirty? Very anyway, good. The nature of the thing will be the same. All right. So is this correct? So we will get V as we will get V as plus six. Interesting. So that means it is a real image with magnification factor becoming how much? Magnification factor being plus uh, three. So it is upright and three times the size. Now here actually there is no uh, this thing extended object. It was a point object. So three times the size will mean something else. So I'll come back to that. But first, just relate this with the ray diagram and make sure that this part is clear. So this is that case where virtual object is giving you real image. Because see, the fact that V is positive means means that the image is on the right hand side, okay, which means that the rays are actually converging to that point. It cannot be a virtual image. Now let us understand why it cannot be a virtual image. The proper extension of the ray diagram. So in this ray diagram, now let us attempt at making the actual refracted rays. Okay. So the refracted rays here will be such that this one after refraction. It tend to act like it's going through the focal point. Tend to behave something like this. Now, this should actually happen in such a way that this does not diverge with respect to this. These two actually meet. So, just let me get that. So, probably my focal length distance is not correct. Just, just a minute. Let me make a slight modification in this diagram, and then I will get that. So this is twenty. I want the focal to be at thirty. Let us take it a little bit further behind. 
let's take the focal position somewhere here. Maybe somewhere here. So now, this ray after refraction will appear to go like this. Or something like this. So it ap appears to diverge in such a way as if it was coming from the focal point because it was the ray parallel to the principal axis. This is this. And this other ray, we can just continue it forward. Continue it forward. You see that these two meet somewhere here. So, so that becomes the image form. So actually, this ray after refraction, you don't need to keep it a dotted line anymore. Basically, going undeviated. So, you can show that. This ray is basically doing this. This one is going undeviated. And this one is deviating in such a way that it goes on this path now. So they appear to meet at a point like this. So they appear to meet at a point like this. So this point will become O's image. Okay, so if this height is H, now that height H should become magnification times 3 millimeters. And this distance should be our V. So V we've got as 60 centimeters. So the height will become 3 times, will become 9 millimeters. So that is the completion of the ray diagram and this is how this entire situation will look like. So from this we will understand something important over here that if the virtual object is between pole and the image of the focal point, okay, then we get a real image. So what we see here is if we have a virtual object. between pole and F prime, that is the focus on the other side, then that gives us a real magnified and upright image. Now you might object that a real image upright is no such thing, but this is a virtual object. So when a virtual object gives a real image, it is always upright. It is when real object gives real image, that is when it is inverted. Now let's see another type of example using another question okay, so that we will get some practice also. So hope this is clear to all of you. Okay. Later today you can 
revise it once before your test tomorrow. So these last few examples are very important. If you just revise these today, then you'll be pretty well prepared for your test. Okay. So let's take a case over here where we do this. We have a converging lens of focal length 30 centimeters. Then we have a diverging lens. of focal length 10 centimeters. They have a common principal axis. Now what we've done is we've kept a extended point object over here. It is kept at a distance some x and this distance between the poles this is some d okay. so given that x is equal to 45 centimeters and d is equal to 20 centimeters find the position and size of the final image given that EB has a height of 2 millimeters. So just try this out. Both are thin lenses and focal length are given to you. So Ganesh, is it a virtual image finally or is it a real image? Yes, very good, that's correct. So what about this person I have to tell me? Now for size also remember you have to use the series concept. That once there is magnification happening to the lens which is the converging lens and then there is magnification happening to the lens which is the diverging lens. So for the convex lens, the object is EV. So U is minus of 45. Focal length is plus of 30. So 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. It will give me V equal to Now 
नाइन्टी है रिफ्रैक्शन to give you so i am not necessarily drawing you know everything over here just to give you a guideline of what is happening so let's say somebody here i was getting a prime that is image due to convex lens now that becomes the object for concave lens so e prime becomes the object for the concave lens so that you can check out now that this distance is 90 so this distance being uh, 20 now you can see that so this second ray is actually a i guess we just extended it for but actually there's one more refraction happening here okay so for so for the concave lens you can see that we have u equal to Plus seventy centimeters. Okay. Virtual object between two f prime and infinity. So it is beyond twice of the focal length. That kind of virtual object. Okay. Because here the focal length of the concave lens, remember, was ten centimeters. so 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f so 1 by v is becoming 1 by minus 10 plus 1 by v is becoming minus of 70 by 6 or minus of 11.67 okay so what does that minus 11.67 cm now tell me that it's becoming a virtual image okay. 
So what this now tells me that these rays after refraction here, will do something like this. Somewhere like this. So that the final image is going to be formed. Remember, there are going to be other things also, so it's not just this, not just this ray. So the image will be somewhere here. You produce this back, and there'll be some other ray. So the image, the final one, will be somewhere over here. Okay, so that is your E double prime. E double prime. Okay, my diagram is not quite correct. It should be somewhere here because this distance is 20. But anyway, so, so this distance here, this is your 70 by 6. Or 11.6 like that. Okay. Now you can also see from application of magnification. Now E prime B prime will be equal to how much in size? With, with sign also let's take B by U. So it is 90 divided by plus 90 divided by minus of 45 times e. So it is inverted okay, and it is of size minus 2 times e. Like this. And e double prime b double prime will be equal to now this was minus 60 by 7 and for that the object distance was plus 70 times e prime b prime it becomes minus 6 by 49 times e prime b prime. Okay. So now relate these two. So you can see that twice inversion means it becomes upright finally. So e double prime b double prime actually becomes minus 12, sorry, plus 12 by 49 times e. Or that is approximately you can take 49 as 50. So that will become much 12 by 50 or 24 by 100. So approximately 0.24 times e. So approximately 0.48 millimeters. But it will be upright. The final image compared to the original object will be upright. So what we are learning finally here is that for this combination of lenses, we kept an object here of 2 millimeter size and when we view from this side, we will see a virtual image somewhere here, which will be of 0 0.42. So it will not be obtainable on a photographic plate, it will be a virtual image, so it will be visible from the other side for you know, collecting the paraxial rays. Ah, the last calculation Ganesh is like this for the magnification, what is happening? I hope the, the, this thing is clear, the position of the image is clear. Okay, so what is happening? The rays that are emanating from the object KB. If there was only the convex lens, they would have given you an image over here, which is E prime B prime. And this image would have been how much? This image size, we have just calculated below. It is minus of two times or something like that. Okay. Last calculation, okay, I'll, I'll check the calculation. I'll check the calculation. Okay. So, Given x is 45, this focal length is 30. So you're seeing this, this is at a distance of 90. Okay, so that is how you're getting this diagram above that E prime B prime is at a distance of 90 centimeters from this one spoon. But actually those rays are not 
going all the way to Ibrahim Ibrahim. They are now incident on the second lens, which is a concave lens. So on the concave lens, the rays which are incident, they are actually supposed to meet behind it at B prime. So that B prime becomes a virtual object for that. Okay. So for the second lens, 90 minus 20, the object is at a distance of plus 70. Whereas this is a concave lens, so its focal length will be written with a negative sign. So it's this focal length will be written as minus 10 centimeters because the focal position is in front of the pole. So 1 by B minus 1 by U is equal to 1 upon F. So this is giving us 1 by B is equal to this thing. So we just write it like this. You take 70 as the LCM, you have minus 7 plus 1. So that's the same thing as here. minus 70 by 6. This becomes, so this is the position of the final image. So this is basically the position of which one? A double prime, B double prime. So these rays, they diverge such that, and here only one ray, but you have to draw two rays and you will understand those divergent rays coming out from this side. If you produce them back, they are meeting somewhere here. So they are giving me my final image, which I have shown in this rough diagram over here. Okay. They are giving you your final image, which is over here, where this distance is 11.67. Because this whole distance was 20 centimeters. And this was 45 centimeters. Okay. Now let us come to the magnification. Okay. So for the magnification, see what is happening. The first stage of magnification is through the convex lens. So for the convex lens, the image size becomes a magnification type the object size with the sign convention. You can see it is minus 2. Because it is at 90 and this was at 45, but with minus sign. So it is inverted image of double the size. It is inverted and two times the size. Now for the concave lens, okay, the object is A prime B prime. Okay, and the image is A double prime B double prime. And the object distance was plus 70. The image distance is minus 60 by 70. Okay. So you can see that this is becoming minus 6 by 49. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Yes. Ganesh has pointed out this this is just just check out there's an error over here. Okay. This should be 70 by 6 and not 60 by 7. 11.6. So I just substituted the wrong value. I'm just putting it here with a red sign. So this should be corrected to 70 by 6. So this is becoming even more convenient. This is becoming 10 by 6. Oh sorry, this is becoming 1 by 6. Correct. This is becoming 1 by 6. But again with a minus sign. So, now what is happening, this term will become, so I'll just do the calculation of this part again. So this should become minus 1 by 6 times into minus 2 times EB. It should become EB by 3. So that is what it is telling you that it is an upright diminished virtual image such that E double prime B double prime is two thirds of a millimeter. So that should be a final answer. So this should be 0.67 millimeters. Is it correct now, Ganesh? Yes. Okay. So this is how we use the series concept for the uh, this thing also, you know, for the magnification factor also. Okay. And though we will study another section in the next chapter called combination of lenses, but there we see there's a shortcut formula for two thin lenses kept in contact, but that formula cannot be applied over here. Because the lenses are not in contact.
right? So when you come across a question like this, you will have to solve it with two um, refractions one after the other. Now this also covers the case where, in general, what is happening as far as concave lenses is concerned here, we are getting an important information that for a concave lens, okay, if the virtual object is at the magnitude of the this thing more than twice the focal length. Then we get which kind of image? We get virtual, okay, diminished and inverted image. So this is very important. And this image is between F and 2F. So the example we saw over here, the focal length with proper sign was minus 10 centimeters. The U was plus 70 and we got the V as minus of 11.67. So this is the example of this one. So you can get virtual virtual. You can get virtual object giving you virtual diminished image which will be inverted. Now interestingly, if you apply reversibility here, you can also get virtual virtual with magnified and the image distance becoming more okay. so if you just apply inversion over here okay, if you just invert this data you see that if you take your object distance as minus 11.67 then your image will come out to be sorry plus of 11.67 then your image distance will come out to be minus 7 you can just try out that as a calculation or you can take a fresh example or, or, as an example in the above case, try this data as homework. Take the distance B between the two lenses such that uh, it becomes much more. Okay, so that was 70 and I want to make it less than 10. So, let's say I move it by 65. Okay. I want to keep it. So, let's say I move it by 55. So if I move it by 55, take the object distance as 20 plus 55. So take it as 75 centimeters instead. Okay. And find the final image. So do this as a homework question later. Okay. And you will see in this question, you will get that final case of virtual object and virtual image. For virtual object between f prime and 2f prime okay. or the magnitude of the object distance is between f and 2f you will get a virtual magnified and upright So for concave mirrors, uh, sorry, concave lenses, okay, there are three possible cases. Okay. Virtual giving real, okay. then virtual giving virtual diminished, okay. and virtual giving virtual magnified all three cases are possible but that all depends on the position of the virtual object with respect to the pole okay. and of course if it is virtual real then this has to be magnified it can cannot give you a real diminished image okay so this is like we are doing a very extreme case of very very intensive analysis but what i believe in geometrical optics doing this intensive analysis helps you in the exam a lot because if you just keep these things in mind then when you're doing those type of tricky questions where multiple options can be correct, then you're you are in a position to do it without too much time wasted as well as with less probability of making an error.
ठीक है सो यू नो यू कैन जस्ट प्ले अराउंड विद द वैल्यूज योर सेल्फ एंड चेक आउट दीज थिंग्स हाउ वी गेट एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इन विच सिचुएशन वी गेट ओके सो प्लीज डू दैट व्हेन यू आर रिवाइजिंग टुडे इट जस्ट टेक अ फ्यू मिनट्स एंड दैट विल हेल्प यू इन द विद योर जियोमेट्रिकल ऑप्टिक्स अ लॉट नाउ देयर आर फ्यू मोर पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चंस आई वांटेड टू डिस्कस सो आई विल नाउ कम टू दोस ओके सो माय नेक्स्ट एग्जांपल Yeah, I have time for just a couple of more questions. So my next example is like this. I have a lens of focal length, unknown quantity, and I have a mirror of radius. 60 cm and this distance between them is let us say 20 cm from pole to pole so now the question is that what i want is that rays which are incident like this parallel to the principal axis they should retrace their path okay so after completing all this over here they should come back like this so find the focal length okay so find f such that ray shown retrace their path and the ray shown are parallel to principal axis parallel to the axis of the system so this is a comparatively simple question but just to illustrate a very important point over here here yeah, sudhir uh, i will forward you the video and the thing so uh no shwetang unfortunately your answer 20 cm is not correct over here so you have to think very carefully that rays jab bhi apne path ko retrace karte hai yes somadeep answers correct so whenever rays retrace their path at the reflection stage ek to retrace karne ke liye reflection hona zaruri hai it cannot happen without reflection so if your system doesn't have a mirror for example then at, at least somewhere it must be having total internal reflection otherwise it would not be possible in this case there is a mirror so at the reflection stage at the mirror what should happen normal incidence should happen that is the only way this situation is possible so what does normal incidence here mean just try to understand that and you will get the answer so amadeep has got it correct so far uh, bhumik has also got it correct ninath you have to check your calculation something may be about the sign convention just try this out to plan the Okay, so see, 
in terms of ray diagram what we want over here is this situation we want the situation that the refracted rays from the lens they should do this and they should hit a normal incidence so what does normal incidence for this kind of a uh, this thing mean it means that it should be at the center of curvature no ye to matlab hai sir that means these rays should be at the center of curvature of the mirror that's the only way they will be placed this path and then finally this will be this okay so if this is the center of curvature this should be 60 from here to here and if this is 60 now this should also be the focal length focal position of the lens okay so the focal length of the lens is becoming this one which is 80 cm this is the focal length of the lens understood that means the image yes so the image formed by the uh, the first refraction through the lens that itself should create normal incidence at the mirror so where should that image be that should be at the center of curvature now because the incident rays are parallel on the lens the image will be formed at its focal position so its focal position should coincide with the center of curvature of the mirror okay so this is one type of question okay now one more question i want to discuss if you people is like this now now this is a symmetric biconvex lens is made of refractive index glass 1.5 and it has a focal length of it's a 120 cm now what we are doing here is on one side of it we are having like a water tank and refractive index of water is this is uh, 4 by 3 and we also have now it's a plain mirror over here so the plain mirror is normal is coinciding with the axis of the lens the principal axis of the lens also happens to be normal to the plane okay so we have to find out at what distance a point source of light should be placed so that the light returns to it so we have to find x from the pole of the lens is a thin lens okay It's a thin symmetric bicon. So find x such that the light from the source S retraces its path. Back to us. And of course, keep in mind on this side you have air. Okay. This side you have air. There is a water tank here, so that is only one side of the lens we have water. Now this is a slightly more calculation heavy type of question. so the concept is very similar to the last one but it is a more on uh, calculation heavy type of question so just try this out
Okay, so the general idea is again the same, but the complication is that two refractions are not air to glass and glass to water. So you cannot use the value of the focal length of the lens which is given because that, that focal length of the lens is with respect to air. This is the standard focal length. So this is the focal length when on both sides we have air. Uh, and the length of the tank will not matter in this case because we are talking about normal incidence on the mirror. So otherwise it would have mattered. Okay, if it was a general case, you are correct that the length of the tank would have mattered. But here it will not matter because we are looking for this kind of situation. We are looking that this ray should retrace its path. So that is why you know is that kind of question. You know that typically Rudo kind of question, missing information. But that missing information is. Ultimately, not required. So, this should be a normal incidence. Okay, can you, so let me check your calculation. Okay. So, first of all, I need the radii of curvature. Now, if you remember, for 1.5, the radius of curvature is the same as the focal length, but otherwise, yes, Somadip, I think you are also correct. Okay. So, radii is let's say r. So, 1 upon f is refractive index of glass minus 1 into, now if I consider light coming from this side, it will be 1 upon r1 which will be plus r minus 1 upon r2 which will be minus r. Okay. You can see that 1 upon plus 120 become 0 0.5 times 2 by r. So r comes out to be 127. So this is actually something I told you you can remember also that when you have the standard glass lens of focal length of refractive index 1.5 if it is symmetric then the radius of curvature is actually equal to the focal length but that doesn't matter. Okay. Now you see what is happening here is First, there's a refraction into glass from air for some object distance x. And that is giving us something like this, let's say. So this is the point source. So let us say the image of the point source as seen from that side is at x prime like this. We will worry about the second refraction next. Okay. So, in this, what is happening? 1 by B minus 1 by U is equal to, oh sorry, I have to use that formula, U2 by B minus U2. So, air to glass. So, refractive index of glass divided by minus X prime minus refractive index of air divided by minus x is equal to refractive index of glass minus refractive index of air divided by plus r. So this will be on this side, the center of curvature. So let's convert this to the formula. So minus 1.5 by x prime plus 1 by x is equal to 0 0.5 by R, where R we know is 127. Okay. Now let's see what we want for the second situation. So for the second situation, we want the refraction to happen from glass to water such that the ray which is emerging will be parallel to the principal axis. So if it is parallel for the, so this was the first one, air to glass. Now for the second one, glass to water, okay. emergent rays should be parallel to principal axis. That means the first thing that we know is that the image should be at infinity. Whereas what was the object for that one? The object was actually S prime. 
because the rays which are hitting this interface, this these rays, they are not coming from. They don't appear to be coming from S. They appear to be coming from S prime. So we should take U as minus of X prime, V tending to infinity, and we have the formula and R equal to minus one twenty centimeters. So we have refractive index of water by V minus refractive index of glass by U is equal to refractive index of water minus refractive index of glass divided by minus one twenty centimeters. So this becomes my second formula, or. Zero minus one point five, but this will become plus is equal to four by three minus three by two upon minus one. Or we have one point five upon x prime is equal to this will become four by three minus three by two is uh, minus. One by six, is it? So plus one by seven twenty. This is what we're getting here. And the first equation was this. So this was actually equal to one by two forty. So just compare the two equations. So one by x. So equation one plus two. If you one by x is equal to one by two forty plus one by seven. So check it out. I think that is what we get. X should be equal to one eighty centimeters, right? So I think people, some of you got this correct. Ganesh, uh, you got it. Somyak, you got it. Okay. So this is again an extremely you know, typical type of J advanced type of question. Which is using a knowledge of lens, lens makers formula, sign convention, take okay, a principle of reversibility of light, retracing of path. These are the typical things that your JE questions are going to play on. Okay. So with this, uh, people, we complete today's lecture. Uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to come to your personal doubts, one or two, which are still remaining from WhatsApp. I have replied to a few, few are still remaining. So I'll try to reply to them by today evening uh, because I have some more lectures. But I'll try to reply to them by today evening so that. You are prepared with those, but I think uh, some you know if you just revise today's lecture and particularly the last three problems, uh, you will be able to understand few of the things and also go through the analysis of the uh, lenses very carefully, particularly the virtual objects. And when you are doing it, do it along with the mirrors. So do the full analysis of concave and concave, uh, concave and convex mirrors, and then again diverging and converging lenses together, and you will also see the symmetry that is between them. A converging lens and a converging mirror have a very similar kind of behavior. Only the real and virtual side become inverted in that sense. Okay, and similarly, diverging lens and diverging mirror, or convex mirror and diverging lens have similarity. So that, and I think you should be well prepared. It should not be too much problem. Uh, just revise the questions in today's lecture and last lecture, and you should be well prepared in terms of uh, applications also. Okay, just be careful about sign convention. That's one of the things. Okay. And also make sure you revise the uh, the portion about um, critical angle ones, okay, critical angle and total internal reflection, those kind of things, and reversibility of light applied in that case also. Make sure you revise that once, and you should be well prepared for tomorrow. In general, you should be pretty well prepared with geometrical optics up to this point. Now, what is remaining, which we'll see next lecture, 
is uh, thin lenses in contact. So there's a special formula we'll develop for that. And then finally, lenses in contact with mirrors. Or if you silver one side of a lens, then it becomes an equivalent mirror. So how to develop a uh, you know shortcut formula for that? Though you can solve it like we are solving these questions over here by doing a series of events, but we can also develop a shortcut formula over there. But remember that shortcut formula is only applicable when the two lenses we are talking about are in contact or the lens and mirror that we are talking about, they are in contact. They should not be at a separation. If they are at a separation, then you have to go by the uh, fundamental method, which is event by event kind of solving. Okay? So that's it for today, people. All the best and uh, see you next week. And uh, just um, let me know if there are any last moment doubts. Okay. All the best, guys. Do well tomorrow. Don't worry about anything else.